Hi, welcome back to Mind Control, where we inspire and motivate you. Hope you enjoy the video. Ronald Reagan, president, said to the joint session of Congress a few weeks ago, the Republic is a dream. And if we don't keep dreaming, we will lose the Republic. Your better future is a dream for yourself and for your family. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to see? You've got to dream dreams. There's a Bible phrase that says, without dreams and visions, people perish. You've got to have something to go for that inspires the heart and the soul. Dreams. From the children of Sanchez, it says, take the crumbs from starving soldiers, they won't die. Take the bread from hungry children, they won't cry. But without dreams, we all will die. You've got to dream. Don't lose your dreams for yourself, for your future, for your family. The dreams of love and enterprise and travel and doing things, becoming something unique on your journey here. Don't lose your dreams. Do some dreaming. That's long range goals. You've got to have those. So that's number one. Here's the second part of goals, short range. Short range goals, that's your goals for tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, the immediate future. We call these confidence builders. Because if you set up something short range, go for it, get it, latch, latch onto it, work hard, accomplish it. That starts building your strong feelings to go for your dreams. Now I've divided goals into three categories, here they are. Number one is economic. That's your goals for money, income, business, profits, production. Economics. Make sure you've got your economics well planned. Economics plays a major role in everybody's life. Economics is major, which means it ought to be meticulously well planned for tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, long range. What if you ask somebody tomorrow if you could see their meticulously well planned list of economic goals? What would they probably say? They say, you some kind of a nut? You must be weird. Hey, I found out what success is. Success is doing what the failures won't do. Make sure you've got your economics well planned. It'll put you in the top 5%. One of the key little subjects we talk about on the weekend is the seven fundamentals for wealth and happiness. And that's one of them, well-planned economics. It's a fundamental if you want to do well. Join the top 5%. Anybody in this room can join the top 5%, if you will. Okay. Now here's the second category of goals, things. Make a list of the things you want. And on my list of things, now I put everything. Little things as well as major things. Doesn't matter how small it is, it goes on my list. I used to just put major things, cars, homes. I don't do that anymore. I now load my list with everything, everything. And the reason is part of the fun of having a list is checking it off. That's it. Boy, at the end of the day, if you can go, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, whatever it is, right? You get into the habit. So load up your list, the things you want. Now, when you check off something major, Celebrate. That's an important point to make. Celebrate your achievements. Live it up. Have a party. When you reach something you've worked for for a while. See, we all grow from two experiences. One is called the pain of losing. The other one is called the joy of winning. We need both of them. Amplify them as much as you can, which also means make losing painful. If you set up something, fooled around, didn't get it, put it on yourself. On the other side, if you did get it, congratulate yourself. Self-congratulations is a sign of maturity. Seeking congratulations is a sign of immaturity. But hey, winning and losing, see, that's what it's all about. That's the name of the game. Now, some people lead such mediocre lives 
at the end of the day, they don't know whether they're winning or losing. They got no clue. Guy's just going through the day with his fingers crossed. There's a better way. Okay, here's the third category of goals. Personal development. Put those goals together. Personal development goals. That's your goals to be stronger, more decisive, be a speaker, be a leader, learn a language, all kinds of skills. Okay. The whole weekend seminar was designed to improve all your skills so that you walk away more skillful. And that's what you want, the personal development skills. That's what attracts, that's what brings good things to your life, the person you become more skillful. Now this is quite a package to work on. Economics, things, personal development. For tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, long range. Okay, that'll get you started. Now here's the simple formula for setting goals. It goes like this. A, work on your goals. That's step one, work on them. And I put the word work there deliberately. Setting goals is plain hard work. I don't want to kid you. We haven't come here tonight to kid each other. It's work, I know it's work. That's why a lot of people just let it slide. It's work. Many people work hard on their job, but they don't work hard on their future. They just let that slide. And the work involved is making plans. I know most people don't. I understand that. But don't let that be you. Guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work, but the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night. Plan, plan, plan. And the guys be Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you've got to be better than sincere, working hard. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good planner. Somebody once wisely said, the people who fail to plan are planning to fail. Well said. So work on your goals. Here's step two. Write your goals down. That's so important. I teach my staff around the world, put your goals in your journal. Because one of the major people you want to study is yourself. So here's the list of goals I put together three weeks ago. Here's the list of goals I put together two years ago. Here's some of the changes I made, rearrangement of my priorities. I scratched these off, I put these on, I've gotten these. Study your accomplishments, study what your desires are. Put them on paper, write them down. Here's another reason for writing your goals down. It shows you're serious about doing better. And to do better, you gotta get serious. You don't have to be grim, but you must be serious. Everybody hopes things will get better. Everybody hopes. Poor people hope. That ought to tell you something. It means the future does not get better by hope. It gets better by plan. I used to have the affliction called passive hope. It's an affliction. It's bad. Probably what's even worse than that is happy hope. Now that is really bad. That's bad. Happy hope. The guy's 50 and he's broke and he's still smiling. See, that's not good. So get serious about your goals, put them on paper, write them down. There's all kinds, his goals, her goals, their goals, business goals, financial goals, financial independence goals, family goals. I mean, there's so many things to work on on this that if you don't get busy and work on it, sure enough, the time will pass. And sure enough, five years from now, you'll wind up where you don't want to be, wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, being what you don't want to be. Now's the time to fix it. Now here's the third step to your goals. Check the size of your goals and the kinds of goals. How big they are, what kind they are, affects you. And here's one of the important phrases of the evening. Your goals are affecting you, whatever they are. Your goals affect your handshake. Your goals affect your attitude, personality. Your goals affect the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress. All day long, we're being affected by our goals. 
We'd like to thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Please also like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and families. Please watch our other motivational videos. Thank you again. So, in life, you know, there are moments when you stop and ask yourself, how did I get here? Like why am I standing here? Well, this is definitely one of those moments for me and I find myself going back to beginning, back to my roots. I was born to incredible parents, amazing parents who served as doctors in the Indian army. I was the first born and as far back as I can remember, I made my parents very proud and happy 99% of the time. Okay, slight exaggeration of personal achievements are allowed from time to time. Don't you think my brother was born a few years later and even then nothing changed for me? We were both given equal opportunities and I want to emphasize this. I want to really emphasize this for you because I don't think a lot of people might understand that being equal might seem very normal. But where I come from, India, and a lot of developing countries around the world more often than not, this is an exception. It's actually a privilege. My first experience of the glowing disparity between boys and girls came at a very very young age. I grew up in a middle class family with extremely philanthropic parents who constantly reminded me that my brother how lucky we were and how giving back to those who were less fortunate was not a choice. It was a way of life, simple. I was 7 or 8 years old when my parents started talking me on these visits in traveling clinic to developing communities around and villages around the city that we lived in Baltimore. Really? We were packed into this ambulance and my parents were provided free medical care to people who couldn't afford it. My job at the age of 8 was assistant pharmacist. So, I would count all the medicines, put them in an envelope and give it out to patients and I really took my job very seriously, very seriously. But the more I went on these expeditions, the more I began to notice that simplest things that distinguished a boy from a girl or a man from a woman. For example, girls were pulled out of school when they hit puberty because they were considered ready for marriage and babies. That's 12 and 13 wild boys still enjoyed their childhood. Our basic human rights such as health care were denied just because they were women. Let this, let's call this whole experience trigger number 1 for me last forward a few years and many many triggers in between. Like a producer-director, for example, early on in my career, I must have been about 18 or 19 telling me that if I didn't agree to the ridiculous term or painfully low salary in his movie, that he would just replace me because girls are replaceable in the entertainment business. But I think what really moved the needle for me and ultimately led me to create the foundation for health and education around the same time. Partner with UNICEF was an encounter with my housekeeper's daughter about 12 years ago. I came home from set early one day and she was sitting in my library reading a book and she must have been 8 or 9 years old and I knew she loved reading. So I asked her, I was like, this is, I mean, it's weekday, why aren't you in school? And she said, oh, I don't go to school anymore. So I went and asked her mother and I said, you know, why isn't she in school? And her mom said that her family couldn't afford to send her and her brothers to school. So they chose the boys. 
The reason she would eventually get married and it would be a waste of money. I was completely blown and it shook me to my core. Eventually, I decided to cover the cost of her education so that he could continue to learn because education is a basic human right. Thanks and a huge necessity, especially today. From the point on, I was determined to make a difference in as many children's lives as I could in whatever big or small way that I could contribute. There's a really, really beautiful quote that I read recently and I think it's absolutely appropriate to say, to explain what I'm trying to say today. The hand that rocks the cradle, the procreator, the mother of tomorrow, a omen shapes the destiny of civilization, such as the tragic icony of fate, that a beautiful creation such as a girl child is today one of the greatest concerns facing humanity. Girls have the power of change the world. It is a fact, and yet today girls are more likely than boys never to set foot in a classroom. Despite all the efforts and progress made over the last two decades, more than I am just gonna give you a stack more than 15 million girls of primary school age will never learn how to read or write compared to 10 million boys primary school. It's the beginning of our future. Over the last 11 years, I have witnessed firsthand the incredible work that UNICEF does for children around the world, especially victims and survivors of child marriage displacement, war, sexual violence. But there is still so much work to do and for me that is the fuel to my fire. The reason I am so committed to this cause and that is where my passion stems from because I know that a girl's education not just empowers families but communities and economics a result of her education. We all do better. It's just as simple as that as entertainers and influencers sitting in this room. I feel that is our social responsibility to be for the voiceless which is why i applaud each and every woman in this room for being such a badass for using your platform and your voice to contribute to change and for ensuring that there is not even one lost generation as long as we are alive Life is a series of emotional ups and downs. You know it very well because with age comes experience and wisdom. And just as it works with emotions, it also works with people who come into our lives and are with us for years, but sometimes this does not always happen for life and they move away from us, perhaps for a while or maybe forever. But the objective of this video is to tell you that this is not a bad thing at all or something that will define the destiny of your life. Because in life, you must move on. A person can never define an end for us. You should know that you need time to heal. Oftentimes, we try to run to the next thing and the next thing and get away from the problem by distracting ourselves with the next thing. And oftentimes, we try to run to the next relationship because we were hurt by the past one. But when we are hurt, we don't give ourselves time to heal, only deepen the wound even more and more. I think of it almost as a cut on your body. When you cut yourself and you keep touching it and allowing it to be exposed to danger, you slow down the healing process. But when you allow time for it to grow and heal, you find that you're better much faster. I think it's the same mentally as well. We'll probably all struggle with something in our mind and at some point in our lives and we try to distract ourselves with things from the actual problem, but that only goes so far. But I find it in the Son of God. I just give it to God's hand. I'm bringing my pain and He brings me joy over and over, healing and being healed. Give yourself time though. Take breaks sometimes. Just sit and be alone for a while. It's a hard thing to understand, 
and it's a hard thing to try to process by yourself because it hurts. Like the feeling when you first get a cut and you put alcohol in it or put something under it to clean it. It burns a little bit, but after a while, it leaves you better than you would have been without it. We must understand that everything has its cycle. And if a person has already fulfilled theirs with us, we must respect their decision and move on in life. Because nothing ends because a person is missing. Because we have the ability to be happy of our own account without asking anyone for anything. You just have to have the faith that everything will be fine in the hands of God, since he will bring you something much better in the future. And I'm not just talking about couples, but about a better well-being in your life. An important thing to do is talk, either with a friend or with someone you trust. There's nothing more healing than talking all your thoughts out of yourself and turning them into words. In this way, you will be helping yourself almost without knowing it, since by listening to you, you understand what your problem is and how you can improve. Take your time, do things that you know you enjoy, find new activities that you enjoy doing, since after living with the person for so long, surely you've forgotten a bit what it was like to enjoy moments of solitude. Also, let's be honest. In a world with a large number of people, the one who has abandoned us will not be the first or the last to be with us. The world is excessively large, and the same applies to people. So allow yourself to meet more people, and at least if you do not have a relationship, you will have a friend with whom you will share several memorable moments and have great talks, since not everything should always end in a relationship. Do not force yourself to have relationships to avoid being alone. You have to understand that you must first heal, in the sense that you must first overcome a problem, know how to deal with your loneliness, and get to know yourself better, and then any relationship will come, since in this way you will attract positive people into your life, and you will avoid repeating the same problems as before. Also, don't feel like there's something you did wrong for the relationship to end, or waste your time thinking all night about the things you could have done better. Really, people can change very often, and surely that person has not abandoned you for a specific reason that you are to blame for, or for something that you have done one time, but they have done it for him or her, a personal reason. They were a couple, not a person. Therefore, two people have been responsible for the dissolution of the marriage. If the two people were responsible for maintaining the love, the two people are responsible for the fact that the shared dreams did not come true. Cheer up! To build a different life, we must learn to live in another way, enjoying life and giving thanks to all the opportunities and experiences that we have in our day to day. Feel excited for all the wonderful experiences and for all the incredible changes that are about to come into your life. Everything with faith and that God will help us in the process. In this way, nothing will be against us and everything will be fine. Thank you again for watching our videos. And please, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, Motivational Vibes. Feel free to leave feedback below in the comment section. How can we improve our content? What kind of videos would you like to see? Let us know in the comments.